In this video, we're going to look at how to take two vectors and project one vector A onto another vector. To be specific here, what I'd like to do is decompose my vector A as a sum of two other vectors. I'd write to, like to write A as a sum where the first term is what I'm going to call A parallel and the second term I'm going to call A orthogonal and A parallel will be a vector parallel to my vector B and A orthogonal will be a vector which is orthogonal to B. That's a lot to digest, so why don't we conceptualize the problem first by drawing a picture. I'm going to draw my two vectors A and B. I've made no attempt whatsoever to draw these two specific vectors accurately in space or even in three dimensions. I just want a rough picture to conceptualize the problem. And what I'd like to do is project this vector A down onto this vector B. So this vector that I'm going to call A parallel should run parallel to B and contribute some component of that vector A but in the direction of the vector B. What I'd then like to do is find another vector called A orthogonal, or A perpendicular if you like, and it's going to point at a 90 degree angle to the ve vector that I just found, so it's going to be orthogonal to B. And when I add these two vectors together, I'm going to have A parallel plus A orthogonal, and if I do the box that they form, I should get my original vector A. If I sum these two vectors together, add this one and this one, I recover the resultant vector A along its diagonal. This vector called A parallel is called the vector projection of A onto B, and we're going to first construct that vector and find a formula for it. So the first thing you should think about when constructing any vector is to determine its direction and then determine its length. We'll first work on finding the direction of A parallel. It should point, according to my picture here, in the direction of the vector B. So it should run in this direction. So it should run in the direction of B. It seems sensible that B itself should occur in the direction. However, the vector B may not be a uh, obvious length. In fact, it may be uh, very long or very short. And it would be convenient if we first make it a unit vector so that we can scale it up or scale it down to the appropriate length later on. So what I'm going to do is normalize this vector b by dividing by its length. And to do that, I'm going to just take my vector, divide by whatever its length is, and we're going to obtain a unit vector now which points in the desired direction. Next, we're going to need the length of the vector a parallel. So I'm going to need to know how long it is along here, and then we'll scale our unit vector up or down by the appropriate amount here. Notice that uh, there's a right triangle in the picture and there's this angle I'm calling theta. That's the angle between my two vectors. The length that I want is the adjacent side of that triangle. And so the cosine of theta will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the length of A. Therefore, the length that I want will be the length of A, the hypotenuse length in the triangle, times the cosine of the angle. Once I see the cosine of the angle, I'm reminded of the formula for the dot product of two vectors. The dot product of two vectors will be the length of those two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. What I'd like to see is the length of B in my expression as well. So I'm included now a factor of the length of B. I'm just including it. But if I really want these two expressions to be equal to each other, I'm going to have to divide by that length of b. Again, the reason why I do this is that this numerator now is the dot product of two vectors. It really is the value of a dot b. And because I introduced that extra factor of b to make that dot product appear, I'm going to have to still divide by the length of b. I hope it makes sense that we're always dividing by the length of b in this problem. The length of b itself determines nothing about this projection vector other than its direction. The length of that vector b doesn't change the problem at all. Okay, well, we're all ready to construct our projection, a parallel. What we're going to do is take this length, this scalar amount right here, and then we're going to multiply out unit vector by that amount to obtain the vector that we want. So there's the length, and then we multiply it by the normalized vector b, the unit vector, to get the appropriate length that we want. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a length of b here, I've got a length of b here, it showed up twice as two factors, so I'm just going to move that scalar length over twice, or over um, 
to the left, and then it will be uh, squared, two factors of it. So we're going to have a dot b over the length of b squared. That is a scalar amount. And then we'll multiply our vector b by that scalar. We're all ready to calculate the corresponding uh, parts that we need. The length of b shows up, and we're going to take the components of b, which are 1, 1, and 1. We sum up their squares and take the square root to get the length of b. We're going to take a dot b, and so we're going to find the components of each one, take the corresponding components, 2 times 1, minus 3 times 1, plus 4 times 1, and then simplify that expression, and we get 3. Uh, one thing we can observe from this value of 3 is because it's positive, the angle between the two vectors really is an acute angle. It really is something less than 90 degrees, as I've drawn in my picture here. It was possible that this angle was actually significantly larger, and we would detect that if it was in fact a negative dot product. But my picture is reasonably accurate in this situation. Finally, we can do the calculation. So I'm going to take 3 for the dot product. I'm going to divide it by the length of b squared, and I'm going to multiply b by that length. And look what happens in this example here. I have 3 over the square root of 3 squared, so I'm going to have 3 over 3. It will be 1. It turned out all along, although it wasn't obvious from my picture, that the, or the parallel vector, the projection, was in fact the vector b that I was projecting onto all along in this particular example. So my picture is a little inaccurate, and I'm going to fix it now. I'm actually going to scale that vector back, and b really was the vector I was looking for. Finally, the only missing ingredient now is this orthogonal vector, a perpendicular. It's easy to find that. That vector, if I move over to the tips of the two other vectors, runs from tip to tip and really should be a difference of my two vectors. But you can see that algebraically we want a to be the sum of these two vectors. So the one that I'm missing, a perpendicular, will be the difference. It will be a minus a, per uh, a parallel, the one we just found. So I'm just subtracting here, and that's going to be the vector running from this one to this one from their tip to tip. That really is the vector we want. So all we have to do is do that subtraction now. I'm going to take a minus, well, my vector a parallel was b, and you can do the set subtraction, and I'm going to take the corresponding components of my vector, subtract them, and I get i minus 4j plus 3k. So what have we done? We found two vectors. One of them was b itself, and the other one was this vector here that we just found. If we add these two vectors together, I get my original vector a, and the two terms are either parallel or orthogonal, and we've, in a sense, decomposed this vector A into a parallel part and an orthogonal part.